Hey everybody, welcome back to Sorvent's non-meta tournament number three, round three. This is the final match of the round. And we have Conman at the bottom, and he is playing Dark Magician as always. And we have Malefic Lord up at the top, and he is playing um, Shadal. And not just any Shadal variant, it's not the invoked variant though, it is a artifact variant. So, let's go ahead and get into this. So it looks like Kaman's going to be taking the first move. So he's going to start off with a copy of Dark Magical Circle. He's going to go ahead and banish uh, nothing pretty much, uh, but he can rearrange this. So I guess that's kind of nice. He can probably put the, I assume the poly on, super poly on top. I'm not sure exactly. Um, we can we can watch it as it plays. But uh, he's going to set a copy of Emergency Teleport, set the copy of Eternal Soul, and pass his turn. Thunder King Ryo is going to be a normal summoned here. He's going to chain the copy of Teleport to grab a copy of Ghost Ogre from the deck. Uh, it does get banished in the, in the end phase, so I guess like attacking with Ryo doesn't really do a whole lot here. But he attacks with them anyways, and he passes his turn. I can show both hands, actually. I should, probably should have done that. So he sets a Sanctum in the back row. Uh, he doesn't really have any fusion spells as well, so this is kind of rough on his part. But uh, Magician's Rod is picked up for the normal summon since the deck was shuffled because of uh, uh, Emergency Teleport. I definitely think that possibly adding like the Dark Magic or Thousand Knives off of Eternal Soul might have been nice there, uh, especially since you know you could just use the uh, the Banish effect to just banish the Thunder King Ryo. Um, I think that probably would have been smart. But, I mean, that also would have been playing into the Sanctum, so maybe he should have hit the back row. I'm not too sure. Anyways, Magician's Rod is normal summoned here, but he can't use the effect <laughs> because of Ryo. Uh, so that's actually pretty funny. Thunder or, uh, Artifact Sanctum is going to be activated here, uh, getting Morale Tech out of the deck. And then he can use Morale Tech to pop the circle. Then, uh, that's it, yep. Yeah. Okay, so then Hedgehog is going to be set here onto the field. Uh, which is pretty nice because then he can get his Shadal Fusion for the next turn. So, Morale Attack is going to be attacking over the Magician's Rod for 500 points, and then Thunder King Ryo is going to hit for 19. Going into the next turn, Comet draws Ghost Ogre Return. Unfortunately, I don't think the Ghost Ogre is super great against uh, Shadal. In fact, I think it's pretty bad, <laughs> uh, which really sucks. So, he's going to set the Ghost Ogre and pass his turn. Uh, Shadal Hedgehog is flip summoned here, and he's not going, he can't use the effect, obviously, because of Thunder King Ryo. Uh, second copy of Thunder King Ryo is normal summoned here, and he can go ahead and use the morale attack to attack over. Thunder King Ryo to attack for 19, the second one to attack for 19, and Hedgehog to attack for 8, bring him down to just 1,000 life points. You can go ahead and pass his turn. And he goes ahead and just scoops it up. I definitely think he should have used the Eternal Soul to special summon from the hand, uh, because Thunder King Ryo doesn't, uh, like, negate. It just, it can stop summons, but it's it's very similar to a Solemn. So I'm not sure why the Eternal Soul wasn't really used there. I could be missing something, though. So that's definitely possible. So going into game number two, he's going to opt to go first again this time. Using Witcher and Souls, he's going to send Dark Magician and a special for Dark Magician. Soul Servant's going to go ahead and grab him an Eternal Soul to the top of the deck. And he's going to use a Soul Servant to draw a card. I have to minus targeting Dark Magician. He's going to go ahead and get Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, which protects his back row from being uh, destroyed and targeted from card effects. He's going to set the Poly as well as the Eternal Soul and pass his turn. So, um, obviously, Malefic Lord has two copies of Cosmic Cyclone, which could be really nice here, except that you can't really uh, do them too well. Obviously, you can't target that back row because of Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. So uh, it's going to kind of suck. So he's going to go ahead and use Shadal Fusion to send Beast and Wendy. And then he's going to summon Apcolone. I believe it. I don't remember the exact chains here, but Apcolone is obviously going to target the Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. Wendy and Beast are going to draw a card. And Eternal Souls got chained here so that the Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, is unaffected. So then he's going to go ahead and draw a card, special off of Wendy. And then he's going to uh, set a copy of Cosmic Cyclone. Actually, three, two copies of Cosmic Cyclone and the copy of Artifact Sanctum. Uh, in the end phase, Eternal Soul is going to be activated here to special summon back Dark Magician from the graveyard. Soul Servant is going to put Dark Magic Attack on the top of the deck, which I definitely think he should have just used the Eternal Soul to grab it. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Soul Servant is going to be used here to go ahead and get this Dark Magic Attack, and he's going to blow up the back row. 
and obviously there's nothing he can do about that. He can't chain to target the back row because of Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. And he can't use Sanctum. Actually, he can use Sanctum to pop these, but they are unaffected due to Eternal Soul, so it's not going to matter either way. So his whole field is protected right now. Then it looks like he's going to go ahead and go into battle phase, swing over this Squamata, which can't use its effect. Uh, and then he's going to... He could attack into Apcolon, but it can't be destroyed by battle, so it won't matter. Uh, Polymerization is going to be used here, and he can go ahead and fuse into a second copy of Dragon Knight. which I, Or actually, he's going to go into Dracos Topelia, which is a very interesting choice. Uh, but Eternal Soul is just going to bring back this Dark Magician of the Dragon Knight, so he's under the same block again. He just has... Uh, Dragos Topelius negate pretty much, uh, but this only uh, negates activated effects, so it won't negate the uh, continuous effect that Apcolon can't be destroyed by battle, so it won't matter all that much. He still could just put a counter on it, just to put a counter on it, since it just negates the activated effects anyways, but it really it, it's never going to do anything against Apcolon. So he's going to drop for turn and pass his turn, since he can't really do anything here. All these Veilers are dead in this hand as well, so that's really unfortunate. But uh, he's going to have a hard time getting over this Apcolone until he draws him to Circle, really. So I think that like as soon as he draws Circle, he's going to be in a very commanding position. Um, I'm not sure why this token was summoned. Oh, um... Oh, he was wondering if he put if he put a link monster here if it pointed towards it for some reason. Uh, I told him no, it doesn't because that's not how link monsters work. Uh, go ahead and trying into the next turn for Malefic Lord. He goes ahead and sets a copy of Hedgehog, which I guess can get him into his uh, should all plays. Eternal Soul is going to be activated to search for a Dark Magician. He's going to use the effect to go ahead and get a big eye on the field. Steal this Apcolone, and Effect Veiler is going to be chained here. Pretty much like the only time this Effect Veiler is going to be used because like these guys can't be targeted. I guess you can target the Dragos Topelia, but um, it doesn't really matter all that much. Then he's going to go ahead and go into Battle Phase and use the uh, Dark Magician, the Dragonite, to attack over a Hedgehog. And that's going to go ahead. He's going to go ahead and use Veiler uh, in the main phase. Uh, we were trying to specify where this was, uh, but he's going to go ahead and use Veiler on Dragos Topelia, um, which isn't going to do anything, actually, because uh, when the monster flips, you're in the damage step, and Dragos Topelia can't negate in the damage step anyways. But he was he was just afraid of this Hedgehog not being able to resolve. Uh, but then uh, he says that he's just going to go into main phase 2, because he's afraid of this face down for some reason. So that's okay. So he's going to go ahead and uh, pass his turn. Everything falls off, all the counters or whatever, just to make sure everything's reset. And he draws for turn, drawing into Rush It All Incarnation, which can break back this app cologne if he ha happens to out it, which is really funny. Uh, Hedgehog's going to be flip summoned here, and Dragos Topelli is going to be used to negate it. Uh, so I definitely think that it, it was a misplay for him to use the Veiler because obviously the Dragos Topelli can't be used in the damage step, so he would have searched for a Should All Fusion or spell Should All Spell Trap, actually. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, he's going to go ahead and link off into a copy of Crash Sheep, and then he's going to use the effect of um, Apcolone to search for Shadal Fusion, and then he's going to discard a card, and the discard is going to be Beast. He's going to then use uh, Beast's effect to go ahead and draw into Wendy, and then he can use Shadal Fusion, uh, but Solemn Warning is going to be uh, activated here, which is going to be really unfortunate. But he does have a Rush at All incarnation, so he can just bring back this Apcolone, and he won't die. <laughs> Uh, Wendy's going to be set to the field as well, so we can get some sort of floating effect. Eternal Soul is going to bring back this Dark Magician back from the graveyard, and uh, he can still use the Big Eye, but obviously the, like this Rush at All incarnation can just wait uh, until he goes into the battle phase, since Big Eye can only be used in the main phase. But he's just going to use uh, his last material on Big Eye to just steal this Wendy, and then he's going to go ahead and flip summon a Wendy. And he's going to use Wendy to attack over Cross Sheep. Then Rush at All incarnation is going to be activated here. And he's going to bring back the Apcolone, and then he's going to do, I believe, Apcolone 1, Cross Sheep 2, if I remember the exact thing. And Dracos Topelli is going to be used as Chain Link 3 to go ahead and negate the Cross Sheep. Uh, then Super Poly is chained as Chain Link 4, discarding a card, fusing with the Apcolone, as well as the... Or maybe it doesn't fuse the Apcolone? Oh, uh, he definitely could have fused for the Apcolone, actually, because he's playing Starving Venom, but he actually opts for some reason because he wasn't thinking correctly. He told me after the game. Uh, he's just going to opt to fuse his Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, and a copy of Dark Magician into another copy of Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, uh, because he just didn't read his card, I guess. I think he was thinking that he could have fused into another copy of Dracos Topelia, but then he realized it was on his field. Um, 
maybe that was the play. I'm not, I'm not too sure exactly what his original intentions for the super probably was, but then he just opted to go for a dark magician, the dragon knight. Um, then he goes ahead and, um, realizes that the dragon's topelia or sorry, the app clone doesn't negate the dragon's topelia forever, but it, it is negated forever now. Uh, Wendy's still going to go over the cross sheep and then the cross sheep's going to die and he's going to take 800 points of damage. Uh, Abclo still can't be destroyed by battle, uh, so that's a little unfortunate. And I think Eternal Soul hasn't been activated this turn, so he's going to use the effect to bring back another copy of Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. Then he's going to go ahead and link everything off into a BLS, so that way he can just start banishing cards. But uh, it, I think it was definitely a little too preemptive for him to summon this. And you'll see why in a second. So he's going to go ahead and draw for turn, drawing into Fusion Recycling Plant. He's going to set a card, use Reshadal uh, Incarnation in the Graveyard to flip summon his Hedgehog. And then Hedgehog is going to get him a copy of Shadal Fusion. Then he can use the Shadal Fusion to go ahead and send, I believe, a copy of Wendy. Nope, he's going to actually send Beast and Morale Attack. And he's going to go ahead and special summon this Construct. Then Construct, or sorry, Beast is going to give him a draw for Valor. Then he's going to use uh, Construct to send Wendy, which will get him into Squamata. Then he can go ahead and link off the Construct and the App Cologne into a copy of Nightmare Phoenix with no effect. Construct's going to add him back the Shadal Fusion, and App Cologne's going to add him El Shadal Fusion. Then he has to discard for the uh, App Cologne. So he goes ahead and discards the Shadal Fusion. He activates the effect of a Fusion Recycling Plant, and he's going to go ahead and use uh, the effect of El Shadal Fusion to fuse his, uh, I believe, the Valor and the Squamata in his hand, and he can go ahead and go into a Construct. Squamata, I believe, activates here to send Rush Shadal Incarnation, or, and the uh, Construct sends Ariel. Then Ariel can use the effect to go ahead and banish three cards out of the graveyard. He's going to target Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, and I believe the other two copies of Dark Magician. Um, the other two are just going to get banished. He's going to chain Eternal Soul to bring back the Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, though. And then he's going to go ahead and link off into a Borla Dragon. Next, he can go ahead and use uh, the effect of uh, Construct to get back this Rush at All Incarnation, so he has a follow-up play for the next turn. Then he can use Borla Dragon to steal this Chaos Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. And uh, fortunately for him, Banish one card on the field does not target. So that's going to play around this Eternal Soul, or sorry, rather the Dark Magician and the Dragon Knight quite well, because it's not destroying and it's not targeting. So he's going to go ahead and use the Soldier of Chaos to swing over Wendy for 15. Then he can use the effect to pop the Eternal Soul, which will destroy both copies of Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. Uh, he passes for turn. Valor gets added back to the hand due to Fusion Recycling Plant's effect, and he passes over. Uh, Magician's Rod's going to be normal summoned here, but obviously he says, look, you're just going to Valor it, and the next turn you have Borla Dragon. You can flip over this uh, incarnation, bring back like a beast, and then flip summon beast, and that's 5200 damage. This Chaos Soldier would be sent to the graveyard due to Borla Dragon, but obviously he's still going to have game in either case, so this Magician Rod is not going to matter since you know, Borla Dragon can just steal it, he can attack for 22, 16, and he can probably get other damage off of the, like, the beast draw, so it's not going to matter in, in either case, so... Anyways, that's going to do it for today's video. Quite a long game, a very grindy game, um, and it was a lot of fun to watch this and kind of, like, see, like, how is he going to, like, work his way through this board, um, but obviously he was able to do it just by stealing the Soldier of Chaos, which I think was, uh, honestly just a little bit of a misplay that he shouldn't have made it, uh, he should have just waited on the Soldier of Chaos. Anyways, that's going to do it for today's video, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.